Hey guys, Charlie back with another lesson, part of our Song Spotlight series. So, one thing that you can do that will do wonders for your lead guitar playing is to learn how to play melodies, right, of um, famous worship songs. So what we're going to do in this instance is I'm going to just kind of jam the melody of What a Beautiful Name. I'm going to use some techniques to kind of get a give it more of a vocal, lyrical quality. But at the same time, I'm going to keep a, an eye on the chords and the melody that I'm playing and just kind of see what the relationship is between the notes and the chords. Because a lot of times as a guitar player, when you play fills, if you can do it from a lyrical, melodic point of view, um, that's going to go down a lot better than if you just start shredding some uh, sweet, big, uh, Phrygian dominant licks, for example. Don't worry about what I just said in terms of what that means. It's just you don't want to come from in a worship setting from a heavily uh, dominant guitar kind of view. You want to rather play more melodic kind of fills that someone can sing. All right, so let's uh, throw on the backing track there and let me play that for you right now. Intro, two, three, four.
All right, so there we go. Um, it was kind of my rendition of, of that song, um, just thinking of the melody and how I would play that um, to try and emulate the, the human voice there. Nothing serious about it. It's just um, in the way that you play it is you want to be very expressive around that. So... Um, So you can hear the timing is fairly loose there and vocalists do this all the time. Like if you have to write out the melody on a piece of paper, it's going to be very basic. And if the piano plays it exactly or the guitar plays it exactly as written, it's going to, it could tend to sound like a nursery rhyme because it's very on the beat, very um, predictable. Um, and there's not a lot of freedom. But what vocalists tend to do, and even the vocalists in this song, is they're kind of drifting a little bit, right? And they take some, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They take some liberties with regards to the timing and etc. And um, that's what gives uh, the songs a nice organic and authentic feel. So from a guitar point of view, first of all, of course, you want to learn the melody, nice and simple. So for the, the, the verse would have been. All right, but you would never just play it like that because it's too boring. You'd rather go. So it's little things like that, that kind of uh, gives it a bit of character. And it's when you do these kind of same kind of techniques, when you play lead, it will actually add some depth to your playing over there, right? So um, what did I do? Well, slight delay on that note. And then, um, and I'm not talking about delay in terms of tone, but a delay in terms of like when I play it. And then a hammer on there. Same year. So instead of playing, I'm going. Now something like that, you wouldn't want to do it every time. But here and there, it can just add some uh, nice variety as well. Then it's the same thing again. So I'll do a lot of that where I will, instead of just playing the note, I would. All right, and then for the chorus, um, It's a combination of hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, vibrato, and some micro bends. Um, because that's the thing with singers is when they scoop into notes and they add vibrato, the tuning is not always like 100%. And, and with pop music, unfortunately, a lot of times they... Um, they edit obviously the voice and they auto tune it and they make it sound perfect. And it's like, it, it's, um, it's an interesting sound when it's like just everything's just perfect. Um, and it's cool for pop and all that kind of stuff, but it kind of loses a little bit of its um, organic feel because um, like, if you think of vibrato, for example, the technical term for vibrato, it's a rapid um, difference in pitch, right? A rapid variation in pitch. So I'm, I've got my note, but then I'm, I'm rapidly going above the note, below the note, above the note, below the note. And it's that kind of a... Um, it's 
when you do that, it's not always going to be in tune 100 percent. Um, so some of the great singers, they kind of play with that tuning where it's not quite in tune, um, but they're playing with that. And even some some cool guitar players will emulate some of that, but they don't want to play something perfectly in time, perfectly in tune. They, they're not playing out of time from a sloppy point of view, but they're just playing, they're playing with the timing and they're playing with the tuning. So it still sounds fine, but it's just got some of that authenticity, that organic um, kind of vibe going. Um, so keep that in mind when you play a song like this. Um, just pick a song, work out the melody, and um, I obviously played my version of that now, but when I go and put on the original version of What a Beautiful Name, and I play that, then I can actually hear how the vocalist will phrase things differently to the way that I would have phrased them on a guitar. And sometimes it's cool to actually drop my version that I played and try and emulate the vocals um, a lot more closely because then that's going to um, give me a lot of that kind of a lyrical quality over there. All right, hope that was helpful. Um, doing this kind of a thing for your playing will do wonders for you because now you're starting to play the actual melodies and um, when you need to start playing the actual fills and, and lead lines and solos, um, it will tend to be a lot more melodic in nature because you've learned to play melodies because that's one problem with guitar players is they learn shapes. And because they learn shapes and that it can sound fine, they don't develop the ear and they don't develop the ability to play simple melodies on the guitar. So make sure you do that uh, because your, your playing will grow in leaps and bounds. All right, so I hope you enjoyed looking at this song. If you'd like to learn more about the different kind of voicings and techniques and kind of um, patterns and approaches that you have available to you when it comes to playing worship guitar, we've got a seven day guitar challenge that you can sign up for 100% for free. When you sign up to the challenge, you're gonna get uh, backing tracks to practice with, you're gonna get tabs, you can see exactly what you need to play and you're going to learn 15 different popular types of guitar parts that you need to master if you wanna be a competent and versatile worship guitarist. So the link for that is in the description box below. You can just go and click that link, go to the page, sign up to the seven day guitar challenge, 100% free, and you get some cool goodies when you participate in the challenge. All right, guys, hope you join us for that one, and I hope you had fun looking at these parts for this lesson.